let's go back a little bit to um, your undergraduate years. I want to get, I want you to help me get a better feel for the courses that you took because we we jumped too fast from from the examination to your internship and I would like to get a, a feel for what was it like to to study engineering in Brazil. See, Brazil has a five-year uh, program actually. Yeah, in the United States we have four school four four years of high school and four years of engineering, so it's eight. In Brazil it's three years of high school and five years of college. So eventually it's eight. But basically five years are inside the college. So I had five years in my engineering school and I had everything that you can imagine that an engineer has to have. You know, I had preparation in fundamentals like uh, all the calculus one, two, three, and four, and physics one, two, three, and four, and computer science, maybe two or three courses in computer science, uh, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical, civil, thermal. So it's very, even though my degree was in electrical engineering, I had a lot of courses in mechanical and civil and environmental. So, uh, so it was a really broad, really broad curriculum. Very heavy, very how, heavy. How do you explain that, that you as an electrical had to take all these other courses from other engineering disciplines? You know, uh, universities, because you try to understand the universe, mm -hmm. so you have to have a lot of courses. I used to have 10 courses per semester. Wow. 10 so, courses. 10 courses. Wow. There are semesters that I had 8, there are semesters that I had 11, but it was very common to have 10 or 9 courses per semester. Mm -hmm. And, and now that you have had the opportunity to be an uh, engineering professor here in the United States, how will you compare undergraduate education in Brazil with the United States in terms of emphasis, in terms of the amount of science or math or engineering science or design? How will you compare the two? It's hard to compare because my degree was 20 years ago, basically 19 years ago. Because even in Brazil, things changed a lot. So if I compare, I try to compare to what I had. I had a lot of courses, very deep, very hard. And I, of course, we also have courses in Colorado School of Mines or anywhere that are hard, okay? But I believe here in the United States, we have First, because the course is four years, they have to concentrate in something that gives accreditation to the school, the ABAT accreditation for engineers, for example. So there is a minimum core and a minimum experience and some objectives that uh, you have to comply with ABAT. In Brazil, we don't have uh, this same process. We have an evaluation from the federal government how your school is doing, but it's not the same. You don't lose the accreditation. University of Sao Paulo will never lose the accreditation, okay? I know, it's different from here. So maybe they can afford to do things that are good or maybe bad because they will never lose the accreditation. And here in the United States, because we have the accreditation, we have a curriculum that needs to fit in four, year, four years, so we have to educate our students to be more aligned on a certain track. So it's different in that sense. In addition, I believe because here the students will take the opportunity to go to a master's degree. So eventually after the student has a master's degree, he'll be a better professional. While in Brazil, very few people go to the graduate school. And how about in emphasis in terms of um, <clears throat> math or science? How, how deep or how how much emphasis there is in math and science in Brazil compared to the United States? Uh, it's hard to compare also, but because my university was based on a French model, a lot of things that we used to have in University of Sao Paulo were based in the French education. So it was broad in the sense that engineers should have a very good understanding of math. I had friends who graduated from engineering and became math professors because 
eventually they have the, the same math preparation as someone from the from the mathematics uh, department. So I had I have two friends who are engineers and now they are professors in math. Okay. So help me understand a little bit about this French influence. Um, where when where did it come from and how did it get to Brazil? Well, I don't know all the historical details, but when the University of São Paulo was put together in 1940s, a group of French professors were hired by the state of São Paulo to organize university. So they came with several ideas from the French system. And there are some details that we have in my school that we don't even have in other schools. For example, I know that's very far from what we are discussing. But I have a, a degree called Doctor of Science degree. It's a degree beyond PhD, so it's a degree after PhD. And that degree is very common in Europe, in France, France. And we have this degree in my university because it was set up by these French professors and minds who came to Brazil in the 1940s to start uh, our, our university. So I, I don't know the pedagogical details, but what I know is that the model was based on people who came and who were hired by from France to come to the state of Sao Paulo and put together that university. Okay. What, what um, other features would you say are characteristic of this French influence? Um, you mentioned two things. You're the Doctor of Science degrees, you mentioned the emphasis in math. Emphasis in math, um, let's see. Do you remember having homeworks, um, the way we do it here in the United States, where students are giving homework sets almost every day or every other day? They have to do 10 problems from the from the end of the chapter of the statics book or thermodynamics book. We had a lot of homeworks that time. But was it was that kind of homework or was? It? Yeah, no, we had several homeworks like uh, end of chapters. But that time, we did not have test uh, books. Basically, we had notes or we had handouts given by the professors. Uh, books were were very expensive, so basically we had. Uh, uh, materials that were sold uh, on the uh, student uh, center and sometimes the problems were just made by the professor so they are really hard not all the time the professor gave the solutions so sometimes we had a list of 30 problems and he didn't give the solutions no, so it was hard for us it was not it was not, not like today we have you know we have a problem that comes from the solutions manual that comes with the book. You know, that time was really, you know, the professor made up a problem and, and you have to solve. For example, I remember one, one class in mechanical engineering, a professor took a piece of uh, wood and he threw to the air and the, the, that piece of wood was spinning to the air and coming down and he said, your midterm is to describe all the equations of this movement. To this De describe the equations? Yeah, describe the differential equations of that movement. So that was the, his problem. Just threw the wood to the air and you have to come up with all the equations that were involved in, in, in that piece of wood that was rotating, going up and down. So you were expecting actually to do a lot of derivation of the equations? A lot of derivation of equations, yes. <clears throat> and we didn't have the symbolic softwares that we have today like Mathematica, and MathCAD, and MATLAB. <clears throat> So a lot of things we really have to know from tables or from notes. And and uh, it sounds from that from that example that the the reward was not necessarily to come up with one answer or one answer at the end. No, no, for sure. The reward was your reasoning. Okay, your reason was the most important. Even if you are, and the reason was had to be critical. No. So you have to have uh, your, your solution going to the right direction. Maybe you make an assumption and then in that assumption you have a different solution from the other student. But maybe both problems are correct. Okay? As long as your assumptions have a good engineering basis. 
So it sounds that uh, this kind of problem solving, what, uh, what it values is understanding the why behind the movement of the block. That's right. That's not, right. not necessarily understanding at what speed it hit the table or... No, no, that's right, you're right. Maybe, maybe the evaluation was not a numerical value as mm -hmm. the solution for a problem, but how your differential equations are set up or how your algebraic solution has a consistency, you know, that kind of thing. It was more on how you format your problem. And do, do you remember this kind of reasoning to be sort of pervasive in other courses by other professors? The humanities courses are even were even worse, I remember, because you know if you, I had to take a course in law, for example, don't know why, but I had to study law. And the idea was about the same, but it was a completely different world for me to go into the humanities course with the same approach. Mm -hmm. How about the other engineering courses? Where, where do you remember having homeworks or exams around this similar format? We had one, uh, yeah, one thing that happened that time, and we don't do that at least in School of Mines. We used to have exams uh, out of uh, the class time. For example, we would meet every Monday and Wednesday, and the exam was 7 o'clock on Friday. So from 7 to whatever. I remember there was a professor who said, well, I'm here until you finish. So he would stay there until 10 or 11 until, until you give him the, the exam. Mm -hmm. okay. We used to have exams on Saturday morning you know, for, the whole, uh, uh, for the whole morning. So we used to have exams really intensive, not not the fifty minutes exam. Sometimes two, three, four hours exam. You could you could leave the room, just get some water, come back to the room. That that was not a big deal. But in these exams, I guess what I'm after is the the kind of problems were similar to the ones you described. It was deriving equations. Um, deriving equations or showing your reasoning or showing showing how you design. How to design something? I remember I had a course in designing antennas, for example. So that time we didn't have finite elements uh, software, but you still have to think on the little elements and give all the vectors of your fields here and there how they are related to each other. So there was a lot of uh, things doing by hand that today we don't do anymore. And how do you compare that kind of reasoning? with the one you find here in the United States. Um, maybe not in your courses, but maybe courses taught by your American engineering professors, peers. There are some courses that are kind of discovery-based learning where uh, you are giving, let's say, a book or or some information you have to find yourself, well, that would be kind of on the same lines that I had before. Okay. We have courses where you just have to come up with uh, the right solution and you have a numerical value and must be that. So, and today I think uh, everything is different. Uh, the way that we try to educate students are uh, is really to make them under, understand uh, the principles and how to apply those principles and we have a lot of tools available today mathematical tools computer tools that were not available before so i believe the students today if they are focused they can they can go even further and far from what we had before because before we didn't have those amazing computers that we have today to, to help us. Mm -hmm. In one minute, because that's all we got left here, how, what would you think would be the most difficult thing for a, one of your American students here to get used to in the engineering curriculum in Brazil, if he or she were to go and study in Brazil? First thing is to know how to learn Portuguese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Let's see, one difficult thing would be to 
First, do not expect that the professor is going to give you all the answers because that's not, uh, that's not the culture there. The professor is there to facilitate you, but uh, you have to find yourself the answers for, for several problems. And sometimes you feel frustrated because eventually even the professor doesn't know how to solve that and he's working with you.